Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on the structure of the agricultural sector, which is a continuation of the previous lesson. In our previous lesson, you learned about the structure of the agricultural sector. The structure of agricultural sector can be studied in two ways. It can be studied, one, by analyzing the components of agricultural sector and two, by analyzing the types of farming system in Ethiopia. Students, let me remind you the three components of the agricultural sector. They are crop production, livestock production, and the allied sector that constitutes fishery and forestry subsectors. Students, do you know how much each of these subsectors contribute to the national gross domestic product GDP of the agricultural sector? Well, let's now see their contribution. As indicated in your textbook, crop production contributes to 65% of agricultural sector GDP. Animal husbandry contributes to 25% of the sector's GDP. The remaining 10% is from allied sectors such as forestry, fishery, and livestock. Now, let me explain the structure of the sector by analyzing types of farming systems in Ethiopia. The three farming systems in Ethiopia are the smallholder farming system, the pastoral farming system, and the modern commercial farming systems. Smallholder farming accounts for more than 90% of agricultural production and nearly 95% of total area under crop production. The number of smallholder heads accounts to nearly 10.58 million heads. On average, each smallholder household consists of five members. Over 86% of the smallholder households cultivate farmlands with areas less than two hectares each. Students, the relative share of smallholder farming has been increasing since 1991 because of special attention given to smallholder farming by the government and due to sharply declining importance of state farming. Now let's see the characteristics of smallholder farming. Smallholder farming is categorized by mixed farming crop and livestock production low productivity with very low provision of infrastructure, small and fragmented land holding, and use of traditional tools for agricultural operation. I hope you know that the Ethiopian government has been giving more attention to smallholder agriculture. Now I want you to explain the reason why the government has given more attention to smallholder farming. Discuss this in pairs before you answer the question.
students, did you explain why the Ethiopian government has given more attention to smallholder farming? Compare your explanation with the one I'm going to show you in a moment. The Ethiopian government has given more attention for smallholder farming because smallholder farming generates employment opportunities for the majority of the population and it is a major source of export earning. In fact, any development strategy that ignores the largest part of the population and the largest source of income will not be successful. Students, now let's discuss the pastoral farming system. About 40% of Ethiopia's land area is located in the arid and semi-arid zones. Rain-fed agricultural production is difficult in these areas because of low-level erratic rainfall. In these areas, people rely more on livestock production for subsistence rather than on crop production. Thus, the lowland area is home for 20% of Ethiopia's cattle, 25% of sheep and 73% of goats. These animals support the lives of 5.5 million people and account for a larger part of country's export of live animals. Students, in pastoralist areas, food shortage leads to bad living condition, poor educational attainment, and poor health status. Did you know about the policy measures taken by the government to elevate food shortage in pastoral areas? Discuss as a group for two minutes. The measures taken to solve the problems include introducing small and large-scale irrigation in pastoral areas, expansion of extension services to these areas, creation of market access to their livestock products such as hides, skin, and live animals, introduction of voluntary resettlement programs, now, let's discuss the commercial farming system. Commercial farming was first introduced during imperial period to modernize the agricultural sector 
and to create marketable surplus. These state-owned and private commercial farms were mainly established to make profit by selling agricultural products. During the imperial regime, entrepreneurs rented and developed commercial farms. After the 1974 revolution, all the commercial farms were confiscated by the government and became state farms. Additional government lands were developed into large-scale state farms. After 1974, state farms had unlimited access to land, credit, price incentives, and marketing facilities. However, these farms were characterized by mismanagement, corruption, loss-making, and abuse of assets. Students, we defined commercial farming and briefly stated the nature of commercial farm in the last two regimes. Now, let's discuss the features of commercial farming. Now, let me ask you a question. What are the commonly mentioned characteristics of commercial farm? Discuss the question with your classmates sitting next to you. You have two minutes. Students, did you enjoy doing the exercise? Very good. Let's do it together. Commonly mentioned characteristics of commercial farming system are relatively capital intensive and mechanized, market oriented farming system with use of modern management practices such as high tech machinery implements irrigation schemes, use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Its contribution to agricultural GDP is small. Now let's see the efforts of the Ethiopian government has been making to enhance productivity of commercial farming system. The efforts made to develop commercial farming system include the following granting state farms to nearby farmers and investors so as to avoid high operation costs of state farms, issuing investment permits to many investors to increase private capital, and creating an enabling environment. Students, 
Before we wind up today's session, let me summarize the most important points. Today, we analyzed the structure of agricultural sector using components of agriculture and types of farming systems. We discussed that the three major components of agricultural sector are crop production, livestock production, the allied subsector, that is, fishery and forestry production. We also discussed the three types of farming systems, namely smallholder farming, pastoral farming system, and commercial farming. Students, with this we come to the end of today's lesson. Next time, I'll come with a new topic that is pre-1974 agricultural policies and strategies. Until then, it is goodbye from me. Goodbye.